is a new coding superstar. This model is called Code Strill. This model comes with a lot of great things, but there is one bad news that I want to say. Instead of making you wait till the last for the bad news, I want to start with the bad news so that we can get it away. This new model Code Strill, which is a 22 billion parameter model, which is an excellent model from Mistral, comes with a new license because Mistral has decided to introduce a new open license called Mistral AI non-production license. So they want to introduce this license to balance openness and business growth. This is same like a lot of other companies have done in the past. Stability also has done. You are completely allowed to use the model for open research purpose. You cannot commercialize this model. That means you cannot productionize this model. And that is what this agreement says. MNPL. And they also promise that they'll keep on releasing new models under Apache 2.0. But this model is properly an MNPL licensed model. I know they want to make money. Um, I don't know if I have anything to say about it. It's just the same route that stability took before stability went down. Having said that this model Codestrel is an excellent model. It comes with a lot of great things. One important thing that I love about this model is the coverage that this model brings in. It supports more than 80 plus programming languages. And there are certain benchmarks that they have revealed uh, which are quite exciting, um, much better than far better than any other model in the similar size and family. So the models that they've compared are uh, Code Llama 70 billion parameter model, Deep Seek Coder 33 billion parameter model, which is one of the best, one of the best models that are available for coding. Then they've got also Llama 3 70 billion parameter model. If you compare these models with Mistral's Codestrel 22 billion parameter model, 22 billion parameter model Codestrel comes with 32,000 context length and it scores the highest on human evil. It does not score the highest on MBVP, which is a Python specific one, but it scores uh, really good. Uh, Deep Sea Coder is still the best. The thing that I'm quite excited or the most excited about is uh, the more benchmark called Repo Bench. Repo Bench is a benchmark that evaluates the model's ability to handle the entire repo level code completion. Now you might know why this model is doing better on this particular benchmark. Of course, the long context of 32,000 helps. But even then, I'm happy that this benchmark is higher for this model, much higher than Deep Sea Coders 16,000 context window model. So overall, this is a solid model for Python, but that's not what this model is all about. This model does better with SQL as well. As you can see, the spider benchmark, it has scored 63.5, while the leader is 67.1% Llama 3 70 billion parameter model. That also goes on to say how good Llama 3 is. And then there are other languages. Overall, if you see the average, this model is doing pretty good on a lot of these averages, like beating all the other models, including the Llama 370 billion. But I don't think that's fair to compare it with Llama 370 billion, which is not a coding specific model. Llama 370 billion is a general purpose model. But I guess Mistral has really cooked something really good. Now, the main thing about this model is not just about Python, not just about Java, but this model is good with the languages or low resources languages like Swift and Fortran. And you can see that in the evaluations that you have got here, the TypeScript score, if you see it is 68.6% .6 on human evil, PHP is 68.9. And then you can see Bash, this is one of the best models. And you can see other languages as well. This model is not a bad model at all. And it is in fact, much better than a lot of other models of greater sizes like 33 billion, 70 billion, 70 billion. Now, what all the things that th this model can do? I mean, every time I make a video, a lot of people have questions. Okay, what do I do with these? The thing that you can do with this is this model supports two things. One, you can chat with the model. Okay, you ask a question, it gives you an answer. Second, you can use this model for something called fill in the middle. What does it mean? If you have ever used GitHub Copilot, you would know that sometimes you have to give a code and you have to ask the model to fill in the middle. And this model can do fill in the middle and this model can do chat. So this model gives you two different purpose. So chat is you ask a question, 
Like for example, give me a snake game. It will give you a snake game. I don't know. Everybody is obsessed with snake games. But anyways, you get a snake game. And the second one is you can do fill in the middle. You have a code and it can fill in the middle, which is quite important for a Visual Studio Code plugin. And I think they have already partnered up with Continue Dev to do the Visual Studio Code plugin. Now, the other thing about this particular model is this model can also help you in writing tests, writing, completing partial code, and you want to do functions and all the other things. So technically, this is a productivity enhancer for uh, developers. I don't know if it's going to make you a 10x developer, but uh, it is a good model, nevertheless. Now, how do you access this model? There are several ways that you can access the model. One, you can go to Hugging Faces Model Hub, where they've already released this model with MNPL license, and you can go and use this model. First, you have to, of course, agree and access the repository. And after you have uh, given the agreement, because this is a gated model, then you can download the model. The model weights are already available for you to download. It is a 44 GB or 45 GB model at this point. Of discussion they do not have the sharded weights but i guess most likely they will release the sharded weights as well which will help you do memory balance so the model is already available here you can download from here and you can use it the second way is you can go to the lee chat platform lay chat lee chat platform and you can select the model to be code strel and then you can ask any question for example give me a simple python snake game and it will give you the code back and uh, yeah that's it so you can use this one and get the answer but if you want to do for production use cases then the third route that they've given is you can go to mistral's api platform i think it's called lee platform a and you can start using this model these are the three different ways you can start using this model and if you want to integrate this within your development environment id integrated development environment they've already made partnership with continue.dev and tab 9 so you can go ahead and then start using this model but i think you have to pay for mistral's api for that it's not like the open model itself but the visual studio code has been ready created for you for you to use it i think overall this is an exciting turn of event uh, where you have got a coding specific model and I guess Mistral has realized at this point that this model can be a good monetization source. So they have introduced a new license. Even though I'm not a big fan of this company's forking open source license and creating their own version, I want Mistral to survive, make a lot of money so that they can give us a lot more open source models. Let me know in the comment section what you feel about it. All the links will be in the YouTube description. See you in another video. Happy prompting.